Hi. You know, when I decided to make a video about the entire Mega Man animated series, I had no idea what an incredible treat I was in for. You cannot even fathom the sheer joy and absolute pleasure that 27 high quality 90s cartoon episodes has brought me. What, you think I'm being sarcastic? I loved this show as a kid. Seriously, I vividly remember my mind being totally blown just discovering that there even was a Mega Man cartoon, and I got up extra early the very next morning to watch it. I mean, even in the 90s, Mega Man was never that popular. Not when compared to games and shows like Mario or Sonic. So just the fact that there even was a Mega Man TV show completely blew me away. Well, as it turns out, I hadn't seen the majority of the episodes when I was younger, and the ones I remembered being good actually were pretty good. The rest, well, I'll just have to show you. Episode 25, Bad Day at Peril Park. I'm just gonna come out and say it. There probably aren't 10 episodes of this show that are actually good. So this top 10 is going to cover the episodes that I appreciated for one reason or another, good or bad. Bad Day at Peril Park is an episode that I'd have to stick in the not so good category, but that doesn't stop it from being highly entertaining. So for whatever reason, the episode plots in season two of this show started to get really asinine. I couldn't even tell you what this one was about aside from that Dr. Wily's evil scheme involved a theme park and making humans think they're robots so he can control them. How's that work? Oh look, here comes one of those mind-controlled humans now. And I'll be damned if this dude isn't the spitting image of bad box art Mega Man from Mega Man 1. Seriously, the resemblance is uncanny, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't intentional. Maybe that's just what a shittily drawn robot man with a gun looks like. So for some reason, the good guys are flying around in their good guy plane, when suddenly, Ring Man attacks. Mega Man disobeys pretty much all the laws of physics and rides on Ring Man's rings as they're returning to him, and then kicks them into Ring Man's plane, totally destroying it and sending him into the ocean. It's been a blast, Ring Man. Give me a ring next time you're in town. So they go back to the theme park and Roll ends up fighting a duck. Whoever's in the duck suit, show your ugly puss. Excuse me? Show your ugly puss. I'm hot, man. Then they end up in this battle on a snowy mountain for some reason where they fight a yeti that's totally not Guts Man. Gunsman's got him. Yeah, but how's he gonna escape? Oh, true. And finally, Mega Man breaks into Dr. Wily's hideout using his totally not made up just for this show aquatic suit, which can apparently shoot harpoons that do whatever the fuck you want them to. Swing from the ceiling, staple people to the floor, suddenly be made out of wood even though it's clearly been rope this whole time. You know, the essential features. Add me Mega Twerp, but almost doesn't count, except in horseshoes. Episode 14, Showdown at Red Gulch. Okay, so there's like one huge glaring issue with this episode and it's pretty much the reason it's on the list. Tell me what's wrong with this picture. Maybe it's kind of weird that Dr. Light and Dr. Wily are FaceTiming each other. Close, but you're way off. That's not Dr. Wily! I swear, if someone didn't get fired over this episode, I'd be legitimately surprised. How did they manage to make a character, a scientist nonetheless, that looks almost exactly like Dr. Wily? They even have scenes together. I was like 420% sure that the fact that this guy looked like Dr. Wily was going to have something to do with the plot of this show, or at least they'd acknowledge it in some way and make a corny joke about it. But no, I was genuinely amazed at this. The entire episode is pretty much a mess, really. There's a part where Mega Man randomly looks like he's flying, and this insanely overacted part where they try to lure the bad guys into a trap. Yes siree, the good folks of Red Gulch have nothing to worry about now. There was one thing that was pretty interesting about this episode from a Mega Man lore standpoint though. The entire plot revolved around Wily discovering these crystals that he uses as a power source to make his bots super strong, and they wear them on their foreheads, which kind of reminds me of the way a lot of Mega Man X characters, like X and Zero, have power crystals on their foreheads. Was this a step towards Wily's creation of Zero? Just some food for thought. Episode 23, Brain Bots. This episode was painful. Also, I don't know why it's called Brain Bots, because there's only one Brain Bot in the episode, and here he is. You've really outdone yourself this time, Dr. Light. Brain Bot is an idiot. Not to mention he's incredibly annoying. Hello, I'm Brain Bot. 
Who are you? Is this what smart people are supposed to sound like? I guess not, because like I said, he's a moron. Seriously, in like every scene he's in, he tries to fix something and just ends up messing everything up. You'd be much better with wheels instead of doggy type paws to remodulate the power output like this. No! Actually, these electromagnetic ropes will be much more effective if you increase the amplitude and decrease the- Quiet! So as a result of this apparent incompetence, no one can stand him. We are going to connect with terra firma with a force of 2200 pounds per square inch. I knew that! Which leads me to the biggest question of all. Why does everyone want BrainBot? The entire plot of this episode revolves around Wily trying to steal BrainBot because he's apparently so smart and Mega Man trying to get BrainBot back. But it never makes any sense as to what makes BrainBot so special in the first place. They also put Darkman in this episode, which was weird because he's not really a robot master, but I kind of don't think the creators of the show even knew that. Oh, and there's a turtle. Episode 20, Curse of the Lion Men. Oh god, this episode. So get this, the plot here revolves around this ancient race of lion men who awaken because space magic and try to take over the world by turning everyone into lion people with their eye lasers. Which honestly doesn't seem that bad, everyone seems pretty okay with it. But regardless, it absolutely baffles me that this show about robots decided that the plot needed to revolve around something 100% based on magic. There are so many cool robots and bosses from the Mega Man series that could have been the spotlight of an episode, but no, lion people. Every Mega Man fan's wet dream. Anyway, I got a kick out of horrendous the animation was in this particular episode. There's also this great scene where Lion Dr. Wily is arguing with one of the other lions, but before each of them speaks, they make this really bad stock dinosaur sound. It also seemed like they had to rush the ending of the episode because Mega Man takes out five of Wily's bots with a single attack, which I have dubbed Mega Man's signature move the episode ender. What was that plan, Wily? Don't think I heard you right. Episode two, Electric Nightmare. There's one very specific reason this episode made the list. Fucking Pharaoh Man. This is a pretty mind numbing episode in which Dr. Wily gains control of everything electronic, which seems like a pretty cool premise for an episode, except it's more like the electronics actually come to life so like phones are tying people up and exercise bikes are literally flying across the room to attack Mega Man, so it really doesn't make any sense. There's a pretty badass roll moment where she totally skins this killer hairdresser robot alive, but overall, yeah, pretty dumb episode. That is, until the last minute or so, when this guy shows up. I already liked Pharaoh Man to begin with. He's easily one of the coolest looking robot masters, and his appearance in the animated series totally does him justice. This dude's clearly a badass. I mean, he's got a cape for crying out loud, and he proceeds to whoop up on Mega Man and looks awesome doing it. But maybe I should explain a bit first so you understand why this next scene is such a display of badassery. As I'm sure you know, Mega Man has the ability to copy and steal the weapons of his enemies simply by touching them. And every single time he does this in the cartoon, the robot masters totally just give up and run away, usually while Mega Mega Man proceeds to kill them with their own weapon. Not this guy. Mega Man steals his power, and what's he do? Dex him in the face! Oh shit! Let's watch that again! What a fucking boss! Episode 21, The Day the Moon Fell. So in this episode, Dr. Wily decides that inventing a tractor beam to pull the moon closer to the Earth will somehow enable him to take over humanity, but I'm pretty sure it would come close to just wiping out humanity considering the insane title activity that would take place. Yeah, like that. Then again, when you watch Wily explain it, it seems pretty believable. And after I put the moon back into its orbit with my Gravitron, I'll be the only one who can rebuild the world. So Mega Man has this stealth suit, right? And it works kind of like a stealth jet. When he flies around, he's invisible because, I don't know, science? But then he just walks right into Wily's hideout, completely invisible, and tries to snatch a piece of Wily's machine, and I'm just thinking, why don't you wear this thing all the time? It makes you literally invisible to people standing right in front of you. So he pulls more shenanigans with this suit and some kind of hologram projector, which really baffles Quick Man. How'd he do that? I'm sorry, Quick Man. 
Could you repeat that? Perfect. I'll leave you with my favorite one-liner from this episode. You bitch, I'll catch. Episode number one, the beginning. Finally, we've reached the part of the video where we talk about the actual good episodes. And the very first episode of the series makes the cut. I wish the entire show had been on par with this episode because it's actually really well done. The robot masters show up and just start wrecking shit and actually seem pretty competent at what they do. Not only that, this episode sets up the backstory of the whole series. So you get to see a young proto man who was apparently programmed to smash through the nearest wall and destroy whatever's on the other side. You'd think that'd be like the first thing they'd program him not to do. We get to see Wily's betrayal of Dr. Light and reprogramming of Proto Man. We're shown Mega Man's original form, Rock, and later his upgrade to Mega Man so he can fight back against Wily. After the flashback, Roll establishes immediately that she's the most competent character in the whole show by subjecting Elect Man to a little experiment. Will it blend? There's actually a really badass scene at the end of this episode where Proto Man just takes Guts Man's super arm without even asking and uses it to exact a manual beatdown on his bro. Will it blend? Episode 24 Brobots. Okay, I know I said all the rest of these episodes are actually good, and I still mean that. But Brobots is just as hysterically bad as it is kind of awesome. For starters, this is the episode where we finally get to see Gutsman's dick. I know, I know, ever since his butt pic leaked, we've just been dying for more. So the episode actually has a pretty interesting premise. Proto Man suddenly seems to be one of the good guys now. I mean, he's always seemed to have some kind of personal attachment to Mega Man, and it would coincide with the games if he switched sides. You're actually left wondering. For all of two minutes, Proto Man must convince the world that he's become one of those nauseating do gooders. I swear to God, they come so close to writing a decent plot so many times. We learn he's faking it almost immediately. But wasn't that a fun two minutes? So basically, Proto Man throws this chip on Mega Man that makes him short out every now and then, but Mega Man decides it's still a good idea to go after Wily in a flight suit, and then he drunkenly throws himself off a building. The end. This is also the episode with the famous derpy Mega Man face for all you meme lords out there. The episode ends with a fight between Proto and Mega that's actually pretty decent, and they even have a touching, I guess I won't kill my own brother moment. Getting sentimental, brother? Aww. Episode 26, Mega X. Okay, no more jokes. This episode is straight up amazeballs, and pretty famous because it's the episode where Mega Man X shows up. This one blew my freaking mind when I was a kid. I've always been more of a fan of X than classic Mega Man, so when I saw Vile and Spark Mandrill come through that portal for the first time, I lost it. Anyway, if I had to guess, they were using this episode to promote the Mega Man X game, and they stepped up the production value a lot. One of the first things that happens is Mega Man blows a hole clear through Guts Man, which is way more hardcore than usual for this show. And the animation just looks way better in general. Anyway, Vile and Spark Mandrill show up, and they're completely badass. You immediately take them seriously. You can tell they're not just a couple of clowns like all the other new robot masters that have shown up so far. So anyway, Dr. Wily is downright spooked, so he presses the silent alarm button. We heard the silent alarm, Dr. Wily. What gives? You heard what? We heard the silent alarm. You what? The silent alarm? We heard the silent alarm, Dr. Wily. Excuse me? We heard the silent alarm. Anyway, Mega Man can't even touch the Mavericks, which is absolutely how it should be. And he's about to get fried by Vile when X shows up and saves his ass. Hey, remind you of anything? This is just a really solid and badass episode, and I don't even want to spoil the rest in case you decide to go watch it. So go watch it! <laughs> episode number 10, Ice Age. Okay, I know I talked up the last episode quite a bit, and maybe it wins the award for general awesomeness, but Ice Age is more of a personal choice, as this episode has been near and dear to me since I was a kid. Once this show went off the air in like 1995, there wasn't really any way for anyone to watch it. The internet wasn't really a thing yet, so you couldn't just stream them or order them off Amazon like I did a week ago. The only way was watching them on VHS, and I had a tape with this episode on it, and me and my brother watched it all the time growing up. There's one line right at the beginning that I never forgot after after all those years, and it makes the entire episode. Damn man, get the gate! Don't order me around. I'll get the gate because I want to. Oh! I'll 
be honest, my nostalgia for that line is pretty much why this episode is number one. But all things considered, this episode is actually much cooler than most others. For starters, Wily's plan is actually pretty brutal. Sure, they show people running away from his giant glacier, but you know a lot of people are getting caught in that ice and freezing to death. There's also some pretty unusual character drama between Iceman and Airman that actually gives their characters some depth rather than just being one-dimensional mindless Wily servants. Iceman feels upstaged by Airman, who's freezing the city much more effectively than he ever could, and the good guys actually exploit his emotions and turn him against Wily. They have Iceman help build an army of killer ice bots to attack Wily, then totally double cross him. It's actually a pretty dirty trick when you think about it. They even get creative with the special weapons for once and have Mega Man combine Airman and Iceman's powers into a freezing tornado. It's just a solid episode. Remember kids, don't let people order you around. Get the gate because you want to. Thank you guys so much for watching the first video of Mega Man March. I worked so hard on this video, you don't even know. But I got it out on time, I think, unless I didn't. But as of recording this right now, I'm attempting to. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank all of my generous supporters on Patreon, whose names you see in the credits right now, especially the Icarus Gambit, Mero Ochi, Angel Freisinger, Randall Schultz, the NM22, Mika Bunny, Kayoya, Jake Hester, Stooge, and Ragnaramus. Of course, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can find a link to that down in the description. Every little bit helps. Making my living off of YouTube is a very inconsistent thing, so, you know, whatever. Also, I have a side channel with my fellow YouTuber, Nate Wants to Battle. Uh, it's called Nate and Dookie, because he's Nate and I'm Dookie. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, we're playing Mega Man stuff this month, and we're just playing all kinds of stuff all the time and uploading multiple times a day, so if you want a piece of that action, you can just click on this little thing up in the window. Uh, there. And watch a video or subscribe or whatever. So, yeah. Bye.